I've made a bit of change to my manager. Do you know what? It's got my face perfect. That face is absolutely spot on. But what I will say, the hair is diabolical. The hair is awful. And that is something that hopefully will get fixed. Look at this. It looks so bad, the hair. Like, make it a bit more realistic, maybe. I don't remember which one I was on now. Welcome back to the channel, my name is Abel and we're back with Football Manager 2020 in a deal with the Devils, it's the Manchester United save uh, and today we're going to kick off our Europa League campaign but I've made a brief stop while I'm doing my games off camera uh, to show you the draw for that and also the draw for the third round of the Carabao Cup so we're going to have those and I'm going to jump ahead to the first Europa League game and that's what we're going to play in today's live com. but I've just stopped briefly in my games off camera, I've got two more to play we're going to see these draws. As always, if you want to support the content, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and leave some comments because they really help the channel more than anything. And if you haven't done so already, or if you're new, then do consider subscribing and turning on notifications. So it's the third round of the cup. So this is uh, 32 teams, I believe. So this is where like, the top seven of the Premier League come in. And then you've got all the teams that got through the second round as well. And in terms of smaller teams, we've got Southend still in here. Wickham, Preston, Port Vale, Oldham... Uh, Luton, Coventry, Gillingham. So some some small teams still in it. So let's see who we're going to be getting in the third round of the cup. We've avoided Liverpool. I did have a brief premonition that it was going to be Liverpool United in this, but it's not going to be the case. No, we've got Arsenal instead. <laughs> of course we do. Third round of the cup and we've drawn bloody Arsenal. Thankfully, we're not being judged on this competition. So if we do lose that, then uh, it's not going to be the end of the world. But Arsenal in the third round of the cup. No real surprises as of yet. A couple of all Premier League ties. Norwich beat Everton and Southampton beat Crystal Palace. But no real surprises anyway. All right, here it is. The draw for the Europa League group stage. We are one of 12 teams that have been seeded first for the draw, as I would have expected. So who else is in this top seed then? So we've got Sevilla, Arsenal, Porto, Roma, ourselves, Dynamo Kiev, Besiktas, Basel, Sporting, CSKA, Moscow, Olympiacos and Wolfsburg. Let's have a look at the second seeds then. So we've got Club Bruges, we've got Lazio, PSV Eindhoven, Celtic, uh, Munchen Gladbach, Astana from Kazakhstan in pot two. Interesting. Uh, Ludogorets of Bulgaria, Apoel of Cyprus, uh, Legia Warsaw of Poland, Pauk of Greece, Santetian of France, and Feyenoord of the Netherlands. So we're in Group F. So if we get rid of five of them, obviously Astana would be the ones you want. Um... PSV would be tough though, we don't really want them. We've got Club Rouge. Not the best, not the worst. I'd say that's sort of in the middle. Uh, in seed three, we've got Carribag from Azerbaijan, uh, Slavia Prague of the Czech Republic, Espanyol of Spain, Catafe also of Spain, uh, Standard Liege of Belgium, I'm guessing we can't get them because they're Belgian, uh, Wolverhampton, I'm guessing we can't get them, a Red Star Belgrade, Maccabi Tel Aviv, Spartak Moscow, Torino, AEK Athens, or Stade Rene. So I don't think we can get Wolves because I don't think you can have two English sides in there. Who is it going to be though? Uh, Slavia Prague. Okay. So far this group in terms of the Europa League isn't that bad. Like it's not a difficult group but it's by no means an easy group either. I mean Porto, I've got Astana and Red Star Belgrade. These aren't bad groups for the Europa League you know. These are actually some good teams in here. But let's have a look at Seed 4 then. We've got Strasbourg of France. We've got Rosenborg of Norway. Uh, Istanbul, Bashash, well, I, I don't know how you say the name, from Turkey. Uh, Trabs and Sport, also from Turkey. Uh, Alexandria from Ukraine, not familiar with them. Utrecht of the Netherlands, Wolfsburger of Austria. Lugano of Switzerland, also Luzerne of Switzerland. Uh, Jablonek from the Czech Republic, we've already got Slavia Prague. Uh, Piast from Poland, I'm not too familiar with them either. Or CFR Cluj from Romania. Uh, give me any of them, I don't mind who we get. And it's Utrecht. So we've got a Belgian side, we've got a Czech side, and we've got a Dutch side. So thankfully not too much travel around. Glad we didn't get someone in like Turkey or Azerbaijan or like Russia. Didn't really want too much travel. But we're staying pretty much in Central Europe here. Czech Republic's probably the fur furthest bit to go. That's sort of more Eastern than Central. But not too disappointed by that group actually. Club Bruges, Slavia, Prague and Utrecht. Um, it's not terrible. But yeah, no, I I'm not too disappointed with that group. Let's see who the first... Europa League fixture is going to be against and then we will play that a little bit later in the video once we've gone through all our matters off camera. Uh, but our first group game is going to be at home against Club Bruce so that will be later on in the video. 
And then after that, I think we're going to just progress with the Europa League, maybe. Or maybe throw some league games in there as well. I'm not quite sure. But, um, yeah, we are against Club Rouge. A uh, bit later in the video. I'll see you shortly because I need to play through a couple more matches before we get there. Um, Villa and Leicester, name, namely. So, uh, I'll see you shortly where we're going to see that Club Rouge match. And we'll go through all the games that are played. The next day. Alright, guys, we are back. It is the very next day. Alright, now I'm playing on dark mode because I like dark mode. Apart from this screen here, it's too grey. You've got white on grey. And it doesn't look nice. I don't like this screen. So, I might go back to normal football manager. I'm not going to light mode because that's just going to blind me. But anyway, last episode, it was a 1-1 draw away against AFC Bournemouth. We didn't play especially well. Pereira got a goal from range early in the second half. But Callum Wilson got a late equaliser for Bournemouth. A deserved equaliser. Bournemouth may even have deserved the win. They were much better than us in this game. But I played four matches off camera and we are thankfully unbeaten so far. So we've done all right. We got a 1-0 win against Norwich. We absolutely peppered their goal. But only one goal, 12 shots on target, 35 shots. They had one shot. We were all over them in this game, like a rash. And we ended up with just one goal. And that goal came from Paul Pogba, and it came in just the 16th minute as uh, it was uh, James setting it up as well, getting a start. Football manager extremely accurate because Marcus Rashford missed a penalty. And United have already missed, I think, four penalties this season. Two of which I think were missed by Rashford. I think Pogba might have missed one as well. But uh, 53 minutes in, Rashford with a... A pretty poor penalty, which was saved by Farmer, the Norwich goalkeeper. But we dominated this game. Uh, just the one goal to show for it, but thankfully it was a win. The next match was much, much better. A 3-0 win, a convincing win over a struggle in Tottenham. They'd lost their first three games at this point, And uh, Cavani getting his first goals for the club uh, in the form of a hat-trick as well. Really good by Cavani. This game was just terrific for us. Spurs had twice as much of the ball as we did. But we did that counter-attacking style, the direct counter-attacking. And it worked a treat, I tell you. 18 shots to three. We sat back, we defended extremely well and broke and scored three goals. It was a good hat-trick by Cavani. The first goal was a fluke though. It has bounced off of his face as it was a clearance by one of their players. Uh, but he scored less than two minutes into the second half for his second goal, which was much more intentional. It was a, a bad mistake by Walker Peters though. And then on the hour, he got his third goal, completing his hat-trick. Um, all three goals scored by our new striker. Really, really good. And yeah, Spurs, I mean, they had all the possession, but they just could not break us down. We were like a brick wall. We weren't parking the bus by any means. We were defending, but it just worked so well. Uh, we did come from behind to beat Aston Villa. It was a 2-1 win at Villa Park. We sort of came into the game with this one. Like We started off pretty badly, but um, again, like... The, the way we played worked pretty well. I did kind of go between the two tactics we have just to try and feel out the game because Villa, I'm not really sure how they're doing or what they're like on this game. And they played really well and they got a lead in the first half. There was no goal by Andreas Pereira. He tried to clear it and ended up just sort of slicing it into his own net. So Villa did take a lead into half time. We weren't, we weren't great in the first half, but we definitely improved. And Cavani added two more goals to add on to his hat trick from the previous game. He scored on 66 minutes, and then Martial was brought down on 78 minutes, and Cavani converted the penalty to make it 2 1 and give us a win from behind. So we did well to come back. And the final match we played off camera was a 1 0 away win against Leicester, who were pretty good. They defended pretty solidly. It was a quite close game. We did have a bit more possession in them, but in terms of shots and chances, we both had our fair share. Uh, Marcus Rashford scored the only goal. We had a bit of a slow start to the season, Rashford. This is his first goal, and he hasn't performed especially well before this one, but he came off the bench and took about two, three minutes to score. It was set up by Juan Bissaka as well, who uh, he missed out on the first game because he wasn't quite fit, but he's played since then, and he's been terrific as that right wing back. But Rashford opens his uh, Premier League account, and uh, it was a 1-0 win away against Leicester. Um, going forward, they were okay. They weren't too bad. Albrighton got subbed, subbed, which was... A strange one he must not have done very well I'm not sure what that's about but um yeah um we are unbeaten and since that draw against uh, Bournemouth we have actually won our last four games so that's really good we're in third place uh one of three unbeaten teams still uh Chelsea yet to suffer defeat and Wolverhampton top of the table as well the goal difference a plus eight unbeaten Wolves look like a great team like they are a really good team but I mean the game seems to really rate them highly as well so, Club Rouge then, we've seen the draw, we know who we have. Uh, let's jump into the game and uh, see how this is going to go. We are odds on favourite. They've got Edit Alvarez Balanta. That is a blast from the past. I say that, he's injured for this game. But he's been like a wonder kid. He's 26 now. 
Like that's that's just really strange to me. That t- shows you how long I've been playing FM. The Balanto in like FM fourteen was one of the wonder kids you go out and sign every year because he was available for like three million pounds. Or right, I'm thinking of maybe rotating a little bit for this competition and giving some opportunities to guys like uh, Gomez and Chong and uh, Greenwood. I might change it up a bit. Although we're expected to get to the final, I believe, of this tournament, so we can't re- we need to take it seriously still. Yeah, we're expecting to reach the final, so I'm gonna rotate a little bit. I'm gonna leave Cavani out today, though. Um, we're gonna start. We're gonna start Greenwood, I think. All right, so we have rotated a bit. Um, only Shaw remains in the back five. So Phil Jones, Twanzabi, and Dalot are gonna come in. We're gonna give, I say, some breaks to some other players. Lindelof and Maguire's gonna sit out this one. We're gonna try just maybe a different squad for this one. Fred is in for Andres Pereira to make his first appearance of the season. And the front three, we're going to go Dan James on the left, uh, Chong on the right, and Greenwood up top. Uh, Gomez on the bench as well, and then some first team players on the bench, just in case we do need um, some more senior players to step in. Uh, Club Bruges, Mignolet in goal, of course. He's gone back there. There's a 4 1 3 2. It's quite a narrow formation for them, so we can maybe look to take advantage of the flanks and play a wide game. Let's see how this goes. We have our first highlight in the fifth minute, and it is Diogo Dalot. And Fred with the ball now. And it's a header towards goal by Phil Jones, I think it was. Or was it James? That's going to get confusing. Do you know what? The text on the bottom of the screen just goes far, far too quickly. All right, we're dominating the game in the early stages. We've got 75% possession. And it's a corner kick here. 20 minutes coming up. Fred's on the corner. I don't know if he's the best player for those. Or he might be, though. James gets another header. But he can't quite get it on target. 24 and a half minutes. Here's Fred. It's a cross. McTominay. That was a bullet header. I think it was a header and not a volley. But we're doing well. We have 14 shots to zero. We've had almost 80% possession. No goals yet. But we're, again, we're dominating this game. This is like Norwich all over again. Norwich, I think, didn't get their shot until like the last 10, 15 minutes. So this is going to be like, exactly the same. I mean, they've had a shot on target now, but 42 minutes. Another highlight for us, and it's Luke Shaw, the only defender that keeps his place. And it's headed away. McTominay with the ball out to Diego Dalot. And Chong is towards goal and puts an effort away, but Mignolet makes the save there. And we'll be loyal over them once again, but we don't have a goal. We deserve to win this match, I've said. They're listening keenly. There's no real like, positivity, but they're listening to us. That's about what I, what I can hope for at the start of this. All right, James has not been great. He's going to go back to being an inverted winger, not an inside forward. Let's see what we can do here. Switches the play to James. He's got Shaw in support. Here he is. And uh, manages to keep the ball there. Taif Chong. Haven't really seen anything from Greenwood yet. I spoke too soon. He's just scored, but it's been disallowed. Do you know what? That's very, very close. I'm surprised VAR hasn't had a look at that. All right, this isn't going well. We have dominated this game, but we don't have a goal yet. McTominay is going to come off. Um, we haven't really got any other midfield options apart from Pereira, do we? Right, we're going to bring on Angel Gomez in that central attacking midfield spot. We're going to put him in there. Uh, attacking midfield is fine, yeah. Uh, James is also going to come off because he's not done too well. Martial is going to come on on the left as an inside forward. So it's a double change. We're past the hour mark. Still no goals here. How has this happened? <laughs> We had the ball in the net with Greenwood, but it's been ruled offside. Chong with a free kick, and it's been headed away. And Rika now, and Okereke, and the chance for Bruce to counter-attack. And they've kind of blown that chance by playing it too slowly. Bit of tempo, and they'd be fine. Clinton Matter. Diagno, well one ball there, good tackle. And Chong, now we need to set up Greenwood here, hopefully, or any anyone. Greenwood, oh, he can't get it on target again, but it's a good defending by Delhi actually. 21 shots to one and no goals yet. All right, Greenwood's coming off. We've got 10 minutes left. Still haven't scored. So Martial is going to go up front. And Ashley Young's going to come on. Three minutes left. This is disappointing. We won all four games off camera. I turn the cameras on and we can't score. How have we not won this game? Oh, my God. 94 minutes are up. A full time. What on earth? How can you have 27 shots, 11 on target, and not score? That's not acceptable. Eight long shots as well. Like Mignolet's made a number of saves there. Matter Matter's done well. We've defended very well, but how? I don't know how we haven't scored. I don't know how we haven't scored in that game. We won all of our tackles, 82% pass completion. We did everything except score. 
I mean, I've taken a risk by rotating. They've given some youngsters a chance, but they need to be scoring goals. Like, they had two or three good chances there, and they haven't taken them. That's disappointing. I mean, I disagree with this, that Man United can count themselves highly unlucky to only draw. Club Bruges had one shot. So the first Europa League group games ended in a draw. That is the probably hardest team in our group. We've got Slavia, Prague and Utrecht and the other ones. Hopefully we can win some of the other games. Uh, maybe not rotate so much. Maybe we do need to actually play like a good a good full strength team if we can. Uh, but anyway, let's see what's coming up. Um, do we want to stick with Europa League or do we want to get some league games in there? We've got Arsenal uh, twice because we've got them in the EFL Cup, of course. So that was a great draw for that. Um, I don't know if we need to play the Europa League because I feel like we, we should be winning these games. We have beaten Club Bruges, but Slavia, Prague and Utrecht, I feel like we should be getting results against them. I don't think you really want to see teams like those. I think you want to see the Premier League teams and see what they're like and what signings they've made. So what I think we're going to do is, I don't want to do Arsenal because I want to try and get a bit further and play a few more games off camera. Uh, so I think we're going to do Crystal Palace. We'll get through um, our, both Arsenal games. We'll do Slavia Prague and Utrecht off camera as well. I think we'll do Crystal Palace next time, a home game, and that uh, hopefully we can actually get some goals there because two live ones so far. Three if you include the friendly, we haven't won one yet, so that needs to change. Uh, but yeah, we're going to pick things up next time with a home game against Crystal Palace. We'll be uh, almost at the end of October. Uh, but until then, thank you for watching. Uh, make sure you drop a like and leave comments if you enjoyed the video because they really help the channel. If you're new or if you haven't already, do consider subscribing and turning on notifications so you get my videos as they turn up. And uh, I will see you next episode for the Crystal Palace game. Uh, hopefully we can win some games off camera this year because so far it's been a defeat in the friendly and two pretty disappointing draws. So uh, hopefully we can start winning some games when this camera's on because otherwise it's going to be not a great season. We're unbeaten so far. We haven't lost a game yet in the league. But yeah, we need to be winning some of these games on camera. That's going to do it for today's video, guys. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Goodbye.